a family moves into a centuries-old home and uncovers its ominous history. The list went on murders to mass murders. You name it, it happened. What begins with mysterious noises? What is that? Here you go, Casey. And an imaginary friend turns into something so dark, so evil. It was trying to kill me and fighting with all my might. Only a higher power can save them. Jay! It will never back down. It will go out and destroy you any way that it can. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. New England's idyllic countryside attracts many families looking to put down roots in its picture postcard communities. It was a very nice area, and it was kind of on the upper scale. We thought it was going to be a nice area, a good school to raise a family. Jay Yabel and his family are lucky to move into an historic late 18th century house near the town center. It was a large home, and it was something that I could call my own, and the price was more than reasonable at the time. Jay is retired military and now works as a maintenance supervisor at a nearby office complex. Got some water for you. Oh, yes. His wife, Elka, works as a medical assistant. Oh my gosh, babe. It is so much bigger than I remembered. Welcome to the American dream. <laughs> mm. When I first met Elka, her upbeat spirit, that's what kind of drew me to her. I think we knew right from the beginning that it was going to be a match. We'll take a break. <laughs> Girls? The spacious home seems the perfect place to raise their twin girls, Alex and Riley. Huh? What do you think? It looks like the biggest, most beautiful dollhouse ever. It's all ours, even the trees? Even the trees. Jay can't wait to show off the house to his friend, Mike Sokol. Oh, right here. Oh, yeah. Jay and I grew up together, attending each other's weddings. Children's births, baptisms. Helping us move, man, that goes beyond friendship. <laughs> I've known him since I was like five years old. We were best friends. He's like a brother to me. Man, you are really moving on up. <laughs> Just look at this. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Girls, please don't get in daddy's way. Hey, come back here, you little rascals! <laughs> You're wearing me out. Hey. Yes. I know you have your reservations. Yes. Look, when Jay and Elka found the house, it was a little more of a hard sell for her. After we unpack. And spackle, and paint, and fix these creaky floors. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of work. I said, once we start to decorate it and make it look nice, it's going to become your home. It's going to be something special. Hey, Jay, come on, get in here. I need you. Yes. But it's more than just the renovations. Elka's instincts tell her something is not right about the house. Something she can't identify. Elka's like, I don't like it. Something's wrong. Over the following weeks, painting and major repairs are done, and the family settles into a comfortable routine. Tell me again why we use a baby monitor for our kids, as old as they are? 
because your children like to wake up in the middle of the night and go exploring. You remember the time we caught Riley heading out the back door at midnight to find the cat? Oh, hello. Oh, mommy, can we have some? Okay, but ah, uh, but just one, because I do not want you to spoil your dinner. Excuse me, I said just one. But this one's for Casey. That would be their new imaginary friend. My daughters would talk about sometimes they would play with somebody, a girl in a room, and we thought it was just imaginary friends like a lot of kids would have. That one's for Casey. <laughs> you are something else. For seven months, all has been relatively tranquil in the house until one night. What is that? I have no idea. Somebody or something is banging on the walls. Boom, boom, boom. Could be the pipes. An old house like this. Wait, 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 listen. It was like someone scratching on a wall of claws. Over here. Sounds like it's coming from all around us. Like something trying to get out. Or in. Jay suspects it's neighborhood kids pulling a prank. But there is no one in sight. I looked on the porch, and at this point, I was dumbfounded. Anything? No. I said nobody could move that fast. Weird. A few nights later, the strange sounds continue. This time from the audio monitor connected to the twins' bedroom. Jay. Mm. Did you leave the TV on? No. What is that noise? <laughs> I'm static. I shouldn't be doing that. What's wrong with it? In 2006, the Yapel family moves into a late 18th century house in suburban Connecticut. At first, all is calm, but a few months later, they begin hearing strange noises they can't explain. What is that? Things are happening, and I have no idea what's going on. One night, the mysterious sounds grow threatening when a message comes across the audio monitor from their daughter's bedroom. You're all going to die. You hear this voice, and it says, you all are going to die. <laughs> Oh, 
we jumped off and we ran right into the kids' room. And there was nothing. They're fine. They were sound asleep. No one's here. No one's been here. Elka's initial wariness about the house now turns to fear. There's something wrong with this house, Jay. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with this house. She knew there was too many coincidences that weren't adding up, and she was convinced at this point there was something really bad in the house. I'm like, just, just calm down. I said, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. I'm trying to rationalize things. But there is nothing logical about these sounds. One afternoon, Jay stays home from work to take care of the girls when Elka comes down with the flu. Oh, thank you. Would you like some more tea, honey? No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. After moving into the house, Elka changed a little bit. She seemed to become ill more. Jay? Yeah, I heard it. What is that? Sounds like someone upstairs. You could hear someone taking like a cane or stick and going up and down on the side of the kid's bed. Casey's here. Casey is Riley's imaginary friend. But Jay doesn't believe in the invisible. As an ex-soldier trained for combat, he decides to take action against the intruder. I went to my room, and I grabbed my weapon. My heart's beating fast. I'm praying. I don't ever want to have to shoot somebody in my house. Jay finds no one and nothing disturbed in Alex and Riley's room. And the sounds grow more insistent. And it was loud, like somebody's really angry. Whoever was in the house was actually right above my head. And I figured if there was somebody up there, I had them because they were in the attic and there was no way out. There was nothing. There was nobody. I don't get it. What were those noises? I told you. Something is not right. Elka is starting to think that the house is haunted. I would say that there's got to be a logical explanation. Maybe what we really heard wasn't footsteps, or maybe it wasn't the rapping sounds. Maybe it's the old house creaking or settling. Weeks pass and Elka grows more afraid. She'd be like, you know, I don't feel safe in this house. There's something going on. She would feel like someone would be standing back and watching her.
Deep in the heart of New England, a family of four is haunted by mysterious sounds they can't explain. Wherever she goes, Elke Yapel senses something in the house. Elke had come to Jay and said, you know, I think there's some kind of spirits in our house. And of course, I was, I was skeptical. One afternoon, Elke feels the presence growing stronger. Elka thinks she's safe, but there's no escaping. Toys just went off all together, and they were getting louder and louder. Stop it! Every single toy stopped simultaneously. Enough! I want out of this house! I want out of this house! <laughs> Honey? After the toy incident, I started believing there was something really wrong. I kept thinking maybe if it was a ghost, it was somebody who lived there and didn't like us being in their house. Unable to take his wife's distress any longer, Jay goes on a mission. That's when I decided I was going to go down to the town hall and start doing research to see if anybody died in the house. Town records indicate the house was built in the late 1700s. And right away, Jay notices something peculiar. The house was bought by somebody. A year later, it was sold. Bought, six months later, it was sold. A year and a half, sold. Seven years, sold. And this is a pattern Jay makes another sobering discovery. What's up, buddy? Mike. Jay shares his findings with his best friend. There have been a lot of deaths in this house. What? Look at this. Jay finds over a dozen murders, suicides, and accidental deaths related to the house. And not just people that lived here, but friends, neighbors, people associated with the house. He found that there was a lengthy history of really bizarre occurrences. So that kind of put a little, you know, chill down my back. I'm like, whoa. I started believing the house is haunted. We are trying to contact the spirit or entity in this house. Reveal yourself. Jay contacts Orlando Ferranti, head of the Paranormal Research Society of Connecticut, a nonprofit group of paranormal investigators. Anything? Maybe there's nothing here. Oh, no. I can feel something. 
when I got into the home, you could just feel the oppression and the negative energy in that household. I've never felt that kind of energy before in my life. It's just a cesspool of negativity. I walked around the house with a recording device and some EMF detectors. EMF detectors measure electromagnetic fields. An energy spike indicates possible paranormal activity. I wasn't getting any abnormal readings, but I still felt this oppression. I was very concerned about this negative energy because it was watching me. It did not want me there. Orlando. Suddenly, the team's psychic picks up on the energy. All of a sudden, the spirit is talking through his body. <laughs> the psychic changed from his normal, quiet personality into this arrogant, <laughs> nasty, demonic. <laughs> are you the entity who controls this house? <laughs> who are you? Name yourself. You are all. I'm going to die. <laughs> you are going to hell. <laughs> Why do you torment this family? You want somebody to come after me? <laughs> For more of haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. Ever since the Yapel family moved into a historic New England house, they have felt a dark presence. And when Jay uncovers more than a dozen murders, suicides, and accidental deaths related to the house, the former military man has no choice but to believe. I live in a haunted house. I'm starting to get very frightened. There's something that is pure evil. Jay reaches out to paranormal experts to investigate the house, when suddenly the psychic channels a dark entity. You are all going to die. And things turn violent. Lily! Are you all right? Are you OK? Anything with that kind of power that can pick up a human being and throw them is something demonic. Orlando suspects the number of deaths related to the house could have attracted a demon. A lot of that negative energy becomes residual negative energy, and it could attract other negative energies. It's almost like a beacon. When he mentioned a demon, I was terrified. We were worried about Alex and Riley and, and their safety, along with our safety. Orlando promises he will put together a plan to help them. He wanted to get all kinds of evidence so he could bring to the church to have the church authorize a exorcism on the house. A week later, There was this girl 
like she just came back from a dance or something. She was trying to kill me. I'm fighting with all my might, and I'm not a small guy, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm fighting. I'm like, this is a bad dream. I went to yell for alcohol, and I couldn't speak. My voice was gone. All of a sudden, it was like a popping sound. And it was gone. What a nightmare. What a horrible nightmare. Or so he thinks. The following morning, to Jay's horror, the nightmare appears to have been real. That scared me to the core. What happened? I don't know. I kept playing a scenario over my head. Baby. Why did it happen? What was it? Could it come back? Could attack my girls, could attack my wife. Jay consults with a paranormal expert who believes he knows what happened. He experienced phantomania, which is basically the experience of being frozen, if you will. The energy is being sucked out of you and being used by the spirit. He thinks the entity that attacked Jay could be a shape-shifting demon. It's possible that this negative energy or demonic entity could be changing its form. It could change itself to a female. It could change itself to a child. It could change itself to even an animal. Orlando also has bad news for Jay. He won't be coming back. And there's, there's no way I can come back to the house anymore. The demon is affecting his family. I had to back out of the investigation. I understand. My kids come first, and they were being traumatized by something unseen. My oldest son, for a week straight, had these nightmares, these horrible nightmares, of an old man with a decrepit-looking face. They were actually getting visions of my house in their heads. I had to back away, but I didn't want to give up trying to help Jay. I wanted to take my family to that point and run, and I couldn't. Everything the Yapel family owns is tied up in the house. I had to stay and fight, and I was fighting alone. The family was becoming more isolated. Everyone just didn't want to attend his house. I, I felt terrible. I, we, we've been friends for, for years, you know, 30 plus years and there's nothing I can do to help them. Would you like some more cake? Yes, please. Jay is frightened for his family, but relieved his daughters appear immune from danger. It seemed like it had boundaries. It has, like, rules of engagement. This entity would go after Elko or try to scare me. Would you like some more tea? Yes, please. For some reason, this thing would not go after my children. Don't forget Casey. There you go, Casey. Elka is less optimistic about their chances. She copes by maintaining a normal routine.
There was something here, and it it was watching me. Just listen. I heard something, and it sounded like it was on two hoofs. <laughs> what is that? Really, really scared me. Two years, the Yapel family has been living in a centuries-old mansion with a dark secret, a past filled with sadness and death. Could this unsettling history have invited a shape-shifting demon into the home? I've seen what a really bad entity is. It was so terrifying. Just listen. One night, the demon traps Jay and Elka in their attic. We could actually hear this hoofed animal. And you could see the footprints. Total fear went over me. I have a big fear of the devil himself. That's what was going on in my mind. It was actually the devil himself. This thing could see me. I couldn't see it. I was like, we're dead meat. You know, we're screwed. I can't do anything. It stopped. Here we go. Slow. Okay. Desperate to protect his family, Jay calls in Bob Baker of Connecticut Paranormal Investigators, an expert in demonic hauntings. Thank you so much for coming, Bob. Where would you like to... He immediately senses something. Whatever was in that house met me right at the door. And you could feel the oppression there. start upstairs. Come on. The Aples were very scared. I could see that they have already been through hell. They weren't sleeping. Uh, they was affecting their health. Bob and his team measure the electromagnetic field in the house to detect for paranormal activity. I think we got something here. Do you hear that? We actually heard something come walking down the attic stairs. And it sounded like a weight about 500 pounds. We didn't know whether to run or to stay. Whoa, what happened? Are you all right? Oh. My back Ow. started burning. Wow. Ah. I had like nine scratches on my back. It was like somebody took a whip and just whipped Bob. It's very painful. It's just like getting scratched by a human. It's the same feeling. It draws blood, and it hurts just as bad. Bob believes an attack such as this could indicate the presence of a special kind of demon called a Wendigo. The Wendigo type of demon can be very vicious. They hate us, and they just want us dead. In many cases, the demon is there first. You kind of acquire it when you move in. According to Bob, moving may not help the Yapel family get rid of the demon. If the Yapels had gotten out right away, 
within the first six months, they probably would have gotten away with not having too much of a problem afterwards. But because they stayed so long, uh, an attachment does form. You have to fight the battle where it starts. If you move away, then this thing will just torment you for the rest of your life. You're all going to die. That was really disturbing. I knew this thing could follow me and wreak more havoc on my life. I was concerned about them being in the house. Jay seemed genuinely afraid and concerned for his family. He was overwhelmed by it. It was almost consuming him. Jay turns to his faith for strength. I always become more religious. If something's out to hurt me and it's negative, I'm going to go in the opposite direction and become stronger with my faith. Bob reassures Jay that he will bring over a Dominican order bishop who is a world-renowned exorcist. The bishop can't come right away. The Yapels have no choice but to wait, hoping the haunting will not grow more dangerous. I don't want to go in that house. I know. All right, girls. Hey, Dolly. Watch your fingers. Hey, you ready? Hey, hon. I'm going to go get the mail. OK. Papa? Yeah, baby. Casey's getting mad. Casey's your imaginary friend, right? You have to tell Jesus to stay away from the house. I said, why would you say that? Riley says to me, she goes, Casey doesn't like you, Papa. That's not a very nice thing for Casey to say, sweetheart. Casey is bad, all right? I don't think you should listen to her. In suburban Connecticut, the Yapel family is tormented by a shape-changing demon some call a Wendigo. Their best hope is to have a world-renowned bishop perform an exorcism of the house, an ancient ritual to cast out demons. The bishop reassures the family he will come as soon as he's able, but it won't be soon enough. Papa? Yeah, baby. Casey's getting mad. All of a sudden, you can hear the truck start rolling backwards, and Alka almost goes under the wheel. Jay! Alka! The truck would have rolled over Alka and actually killed her. Are you OK? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you all right? Jay now realizes the twins have been interacting with an evil entity, but feels powerless to stop it. The imaginary friend Casey was becoming more and more dangerous. Oh. So now I'm totally desperate. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about Elka. She almost got killed. Now I really need to have an exorcist come in. The day comes when the bishop arrives to perform an exorcism of the house. Girls ready for the baptism? He begins by rebaptizing Alex and Riley. We already had them baptized. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And he says, no. He goes, they're being baptized by me. In the Holy Spirit. The bishop talked to Riley about their imaginary friends. And then he, he took the thumb and made the sign of the cross over and, and, and told her not to speak any more of them, that they cannot hurt her or touch her, and to let him go. Glorious Father. Then the bishop begins the rite of exorcism. 
Save this servant from the enemy. Glorious father. Save thy servant from the enemy. Gloria Patri. Save this servant from the enemy. When the bishop first came in, the house was tense and very angry. And then after he left, the house felt calm and mild. We noticed an immediate change in the house. It felt lighter. He does. He, he mows the grass. Love you. Yeah. 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 Food, <laughs> drinks. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> Elka noticed the change. She was like, I actually kind of feel good. You, know, you spilled some on the table. Don't you know? I'm oh, sorry. It's paid for. <laughs> so if that's the worst that happens, I think we're OK. After everything we've been through, everything's back to normal. Since that day, paranormal activity has returned to the Yapel House. The bishop, I believe, did weaken it to the point where we can actually live in the house. The ultimate mystery, whether a demon somehow entered the home and triggered years of violence, or if various violent events somehow attracted a demon, is one that will likely never be solved. The violence in that house was just so overwhelming over the years. Jay! I believe there was probably a demon in this house right from the beginning. The Yapos plan to move once they can sell the house. I would hope they move. Boy, burn the house to the ground, one of the two. And I don't know how you get rid of it. You can't kill, you can't blow it up. I said, we got to pray. That's all we have left. It's so hard to live with it. You want to get out, you, you pray, somebody we can come up and say, hey, I, I'll buy your house for you, move. I wish the town would just buy it or someone would buy it and just destroy it. Until then, Jay Yapel soldiers on. I'm fighting an endless war against something that's unseen and that I have no defense over, and I just have to keep my eyes open.